Hey guys, welcome back to another True Crime Thursday. Today I'm going to be talking about the serial killer Jake Bird, who actually, like, cursed people. And it worked. Which is, um, interesting. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. Jake Bird was born in Louisiana in 1901. He had a troubled life and was forced to leave home at the age of 19 to seek his fortune um, by riding the rails of America. Bird fit the bill as a stereotypical hobo, uh, sneaking into train cars only to hop off once a train reached town. He would then trade a day's work for a good night's sleep and some food, only to hop on another train and do it all over again. Which, this seems like something that would happen, like, 1800s style, but this, this, is, this was just early 1900s. This wasn't that long ago, in honesty. Otherwise, unremarkable wherever he went. But that would change when he reached the t end of the line in Tacoma. The city of destiny, after all, was the terminus of the Transcontinental Railroad, a fact that coined the term. Fast forward to October 30th, 1947, and things go bad. <laughs> Don't they always? You know, there's always a point where it just <laughs> it goes bad, it goes wrong, things worse. Jake Bird was 45, and he came across the home of 53-year-old Bertha Clutt and her daughter, 17-year-old Beverly June. At, at approximately 2:30 a.m., he stole a dollar and fifty from Bertha's purse, but she awoke to see him standing over her bed and let out a dreadful scream. Obviously alerting her daughter and several neighbors. Beverly rushed to her mother's bedside manor only to find that Jake had bludgeoned Bertha with an axe. Bev Beverly ran, but she didn't really have the strength to fight him off, and he killed her too. The house this attack happened at still stands today at 1007 South 21st Street in Tacoma. Now the mother and daughter screamed quite loudly, and it alerted the neighbors who called the police. Two officers arrived at the scene, only to find Jake covered in blood, still holding a knife as he ran from the scene. They cornered him, and he attacked. One officer was slashed in the hand, while the other was stabbed in the shoulder. Despite their injuries, the officers managed to tackle Jake and handcuff him. He was taken to the hospital for his injuries, then delivered in shackles to the old city, old city hall jail cells. Rusky. Not looking good, my guy. Once in custody, investigators began to unravel what had occurred at the Clut residence and why Bird had killed the two women. Bird told police that he had broken into the home to steal some money for shoes. While he was prowling around for money in Bertha's bedroom, she woke and grabbed him. Bertha's daughter heard the struggle, and when Bird entered into the kitchen, she proceeded to try and fight him. Bird killed the two women during the altercations and ran when he heard the police. He said he only attacked the officers because he was afraid they were going to shoot him. Police would later learn that this was not Bird's first run-in with the law. Fifteen years of his life was spent in various prisons around the country for crimes including burglary, murder, uh, attempted murder, and assault. Oh, they had come to the realization that this was no down-on-his-luck transient looking to grab a few dollars to buy some shoes in the heat of the moment, ending up killing two women. He was a cold, calculated killer. It only took a day and a half for the jury to find Bird guilty of the death of Bertha. He was not charged for the death of her daughter, however, because in common cases of multiple homicides, to be, they were tried separately in case one of them were dismissed. So instead of doing them both and the whole case being dismissed, they would do it separately. So that way if one dis was dismissed, they had something else to try and blame on him, which obviously he did. So, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't be hard. <laughs> Fingerprints found at the scene and the blood and brain matter still found on his clothes when the police arrived was given enough evidence to prove that he had been the culprit. Throw in his signed confession and the case was open and shut. Going by the jury's recommendation, the Honorable Judge Hodge sentenced Jake Bird to death by hanging. A double killing was news, but in most cases it would have just, you know, been lost, you know. Oh, cool. Two people died. Would have been big news and then, you know, died out. But this case, um, 
that didn't happen. After his conviction was announced, he was allowed to give a final statement. He talked for 20 minutes, noting his request to represent himself had been denied and that his own lawyers were against him. Bird then said, I'm putting the Jake Bird hex on all of you who had anything to do with, m with my being punished. Mark my words, you will die before I do. Taken as just another threat by a murderer, the hex didn't get much notice until people started dying. The first to go was the judge who sentenced Bird to death. He died of a heart attack, not long after the conviction. Next was Bird's defense lawyer, who also died of a heart attack. Then the police officer who recorded Bird's confession died of a heart attack. Then another police officer who wrote an official report on Bird passed of a heart attack. Then one of Bird's prison guards died of a heart attack. And finally, the court's clerk died of pneumonia. Almost all of them died of heart attacks. Only one died of pneumonia. That is a lot of people who died in a very short time after his conviction. And almost all of them had heart attacks. Only one had pneumonia. And it's possible that he just died of pneumonia and he wasn't part of this curse. Um, but the others all died of heart attacks soon after this happened. They all died before he did. Which is um, kind of scary. <laughs> Bird was pleased with the deaths. Each time someone related to his case perished, he responded with a misquoted Bible verse suggesting that God had served justice, which I don't really agree because he's a murderer, so in honesty, it's, that's not good. <laughs> the execution at Washington State Pen Penitentiary was scheduled for January 16th, 1948, but Bird claimed he had committed 44 other murders and he was willing to help the justice he was willing to help police solve them. Washington Governor Monrad C. Walgren granted a 60-day reprieve. Police from other states interviewed Bird and 11 murders were substantiated. He was knowledgeable enough about the 33 other murders to become a prime suspect. So they closed 11 unsolved murder cases and he is a prime suspect in 33 others. They couldn't pin him to it exactly but he is a prime suspect, so it's possible that he did commit them. The interviews with Byrd enabled the police departments of many states to, de to declare many unsolved murders as solved. Byrd's first kills were reportedly two women in Evanston, Illinois in 1942. Other victims were confirmed in Louisville, Kentucky, Omaha, Nebraska, Kansas City, Kansas, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Cleveland, Ohio, Orlando, Florida, and Portage, Wisconsin. You're killing people in my state? I've never even been to Portage, but, like, rude. <laughs> Police in Houston, Texas, suspected he murdered a woman there as well. He mostly preyed on Caucasian women and dispatched his victims with an axe or a hatchet. During his reprieve, Bird lodged an appeal, but a re retrial was denied by the Washington State Supreme Court. His appeals to the federal courts, including three petitions to the United States Supreme Court, also were denied. He was executed in the morning of July 15, 1949, at 12.20 a.m. before 125 witnesses. Bird wrote a note asking for forgiveness. The prison champlain began to read it when the trap door opened and he died. So he, the, he didn't even get through the whole note before, his, before Bird's neck snapped. It's like, was that faulty? Was that on purpose? Like, kind of rude. <laughs> He is buried at the prison cemetery at Walla Walla Correctional Center. His grave is marked with his prison number of 21520. In Bird's last will and testament, he left his fortune of $6.15, which today will be about 68.45, to his attorney who filed his appeals. To conclude, um, I don't really know. If this guy did kill that many people, I'm like, damn, there's not a lot known about this guy. Basically, he just appeared out of nowhere. They know he was born in Louisiana around 1901, but they don't actually know where, and I don't even think he knew. I mean, he was a transient. He was basically a hobo. He went from train to train and would do work for a day so he could have a warm meal and sleep, and he just did this on and off, and he went to jail multiple times for murder, burglary, you know, all these other things, so he wasn't a great person. Um... And he confessed to 44 murders, which 11 of them were com were connected to him for sure, with 33 being 
Maybe. So he was a prime suspect, but they couldn't be like, he did it. And then he, he killed those two, the mom and daughter, in Tacoma. Plus at least 11 other people, and maybe 33 others, if not more. Um, and uh, he was not a good person. No, he wasn't. Um, I mean, he killed people uh, in multiple states. And, um, he put a curse on the people in his case, and, and a few of them did die. Which, um, is a little concerning. Now, you'd be like, curses, what? <laughs> you know, curses don't exist. All right, but it's kind of weird that he said this, and then his, like, defense lawyer died, the judge died, a few, you know, a police, a few police officers died, a prison guard died, like, all these different people died. Almost all of them have heart attacks, except for one, which died of pneumonia. But it's weird because they all died before him, like his hex said. They all died before him in a very similar manner. And it's like, hmm, it's a little weird. Weird. It's probably a coincidence, but this coincidence is very weird that he says this and then it happens. So, he got some magic powers or something, and... Like, he tried to appeal it, and he tried, you know, to get out of it, and I do not think he was innocent. I mean, he confessed all these murders. He had brain matter still on him when they caught him in the house where he murdered uh, Beverly and Bertha. So, he is a serial killer, and depending, he could have killed more people than the ones he think they think he did. Um, but he was a killer. He killed and raped and did all this other stuff, um, and cursed a bunch of people. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed as much as you can enjoy a story like this. Comment down below if you think this curse is real or if it was just a coincidence. Alright guys, I will see you Thursday with another True Crime Thursday and Monday with whatever I decide to post. Alright, I'll see you later.